It's been three and a half years since Jedi Fallen Order, developed by the famous studio Respawn, was released. The game wasn't in the best state, at least if you played it on the basic versions of PS4 and Xbox One. There were quite a few problems here and there, with some especially memorable freezes when the game would freeze up. However, the Western press recently got to play an early build of Jedi Survivor. After analyzing the materials, I can confidently say that the sequel could become one of the most detailed and innovative projects that the Star Wars gaming franchise has ever seen. Based on the initial trailers, I assumed that we would get a standard sequel where the developers take all the best from the first game and multiply it by two, but even that wouldn't be enough to surpass the original. Fortunately, these expectations were not met. Survivor is a much bigger leap forward than I could have predicted. Respawn was able to replicate Naughty Dog's triumphant leap from the original Uncharted to its sequel, Among Thieves. From sophisticated visual effects to impressive level design, from faster combat to wide customization options, Survivor achieves the level of depth and perfection of the Fallen Order, and all of this is infused with an exciting storyline that few can predict. This is the best gaming adaptation of Star Wars. Of course, I won't touch on specific plot points that were in the preview to avoid spoiling anything, but I can still talk about the very beginning. The situation is this, five years have passed since the original's finale, and now Kel has a bearded face and a slightly deeper voice. He crashed his ship on a planet called Kobo, and when some vicious bandits started bothering the local prospectors near their saloon on this yellow border planet, Kel quickly showed them who the new sheriff is. However, I can confidently say that the early stages of the plot show Kel's journey in a new direction, so much so that even the biggest Star Wars fans can't predict it. The sequel has an intriguing story at the beginning, and if this pace and quality continue, it will take the entire game franchise to a new level. Judging by the beginning of the game, the writers have created a plot that not only develops the main characters that we already know and love but also dares to give a truly adult, grounded look at the distant future. Upon arriving on the planet Kobo, one thing became clear, Survivor is a much livelier game than its predecessor. Whether it's the nature on the ground or the winged creatures in the sky, or the many more diverse NPCs encountered along the way, Kobo felt like a truly alive planet. Survivor comes even more alive when the player reaches the gang outpost a local stronghold filled with captivating characters. It's like stepping into the famous Moss Eisley Cantina, where Han Solo discussed his next smuggling job. Of course, there were also traders who were willing to sell anything they had for a few credits or resources. This sequel is much more detailed than the original, and Kobo is just the first planet in the game. Exploring various locations, you can come across new characters that you can hire and bring to the gang outpost. Approximately in the middle of the demo, I received notifications that characters now have new dialogue options. This means that those you meet serve not only as one-time quest givers but can also react to how Kel affects the world around him. In terms of its gameplay, Survivor is a direct continuation of Fallen Order with its third-person combat and platformer mechanics. Instead of trying to reinvent the original, much of what made the first game an exciting experience remains untouched, with only new additions and minor improvements. The sequel still represents a Souls-like game, but it is more accessible. As before, the emphasis is on counter-attacking with timely parries. Elements of Metroidvania are also present, with the player discovering various items and abilities that allow them to access previously and accessible locations. If you didn't particularly enjoy the backtracking in the original, you won't have to worry about changes in this aspect. Overall, the gameplay consists of intense combat, exploration of an open world, and light puzzles as in the first game. However, these three gameplay pillars have been expanded. Respawn has added more depth to each mechanic that carried over from Fallen Order. From a combat system standpoint, Survivor features five distinct stances. Whereas in the original, players could switch between a single lightsaber move set and dual wielding attacks only with one new option at the end of the game, double-bladed lightsabers. For each of the five proposed combat stances, there are unique skill trees to enhance their capabilities. They complement the traditional strength and survival trees created in the original game. As a result, how you develop Cal's skills through Throughout the game depends on your preferences. If you want to play more at a distance, shooting enemies from afar, all relevant upgrades await you in the blaster stance tree. If you want to prepare for tense situations when hordes of enemies surround you, you can effectively do so by upgrading the double lightsaber stance. Kel can now tame animals to ride them both on land and in the air. 
Although I wasn't able to do this during my demo playthrough, full-fledged mounts have been added that allow for quick traversal of the surrounding world. On the map, you can manually place markers to indicate interesting places for further exploration, and fast travel, which fans of the first game have long requested, has also arrived in the sequel. If you love 100% completion, here's some good news for you, Survivor has been filled with additional content. Secret bosses, platforming challenges, puzzle rooms, and even secret time-based challenges, this time featuring a real tsunami of various secondary tasks. And although many of them are optional, the reward is often worth it, which encourages you to venture down numerous rabbit holes more often to see what cool loot awaits at the end. Respawn has taken a broader approach to customization. Kel has five different customization elements, including hair, beard, jacket, shirt, and pants. The latter three can also be further customized with unique colors. The components of the droid BD-1 can also be replaced and painted, as can your lightsaber, allowing you to customize different parts and choose your own cyber crystal. It's possible that the Mantis, the protagonist's ship, can also be customized, although there was no such possibility in the demo. Just a reminder that the game will take approximately 20 to 25 hours to complete, depending on whether you want to explore the map, search for secrets, and complete side quests. With an expanded map featuring galaxies, larger planets to explore, new characters to meet, and gameplay systems and secrets to uncover, Survivor has the potential to surpass the first installment. But whether or not it actually will, we'll only find out after the game's release on April 28th for PS5, Xbox Series, and PC, and some time after that. Of course, feel free to let us know what you think about the sequel, is it a masterpiece or a flop? Stay with us, it's going to get even more interesting from here on out. See you on Subgamer, watch and play with us.